Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the Online Piano and the Online Violin Tutor. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about why does your violin sound scratchy and screechy? Um, now this is just gonna be a very quick video, just discussing one or two reasons. There are obviously, you know, a multitude of reasons that your violin could sound scratchy, but I'm just gonna run through kind of the most the most common ones, the most, the most common issues that are just gonna crop up most often. And if you just solve these few problems, then, you know, you might not have any kind of scratchiness at all. But before we get into this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and comment underneath the video as it does help with the YouTube algorithms to help get my YouTube channel out there a little bit more. I'd also just quickly like to make everyone aware that I have a Patreon page and for just $5 a month, you'll gain access to my complete back catalogue of almost a thousand pieces of violin sheet music which are added to on a weekly basis as well as mp3 backing tracks for the violin, violin performance covers and some easy piano music as well that cover literally every genre from Chopin to Adele and everything in between. If you are interested further details on my Patreon page can be found in the link just under here and I will also put a link underneath this video and in the comments as well. So, scratchy and squeaky sounds um, are generally due to proper, improper, sorry, bow technique, such as pressing too hard. So it sounds very obvious, but if you are, if you are more of a newbie starting out, and I do get asked this question quite often actually, a lot of you will ask, how hard do I press the bow on the strings? So it's, it's, it is a little common sense on how hard you press on the strings. So if I was to press really hard on the bow, we're gonna get that kind of sound. Now we don't want that, do we? Because we can see that the bow is being, the actual hair of the bow is being pushed up into the wood of the bow. So the harder I'm, the harder I'm pressing, you can sort of see, you can see that it's kind of pushing in. Now we, we don't want that. And then obviously if we're too light, we're gonna get that kind of harmonic, kind of wispy sort of sound. So what we wanna do is just have a nice consistent bow. So what you can do is just practice going up and down the, the bow length just a few times, just on the varying strings. So an exercise that you can do is just bow very slowly and deliberately on the strings and just isolate each of those strings. So. You know, something like that, so that you understand that you're not. You don't want to be pushing down. If your index finger feels like it is really just if you know if your index finger feels like it's there's a lot of pressure just all on that that one index finger right here you're putting too much pressure on the bow no one finger in your bow hand should feel like it's doing more work than the others they should all be pulling their weight just as equally so i guess with the with the pressure your hand doesn't want to feel like you're putting any pressure especially not on the index because it's very easy to want to push push everything towards the index isn't it so we don't want to be pushing down too hard because we're going to get that kind of horrible sound and we don't want to be too light we just want to be a nice place the bow on the string and just be nice and consistent place the bow on the string and then simply just pull your arm up and down and just let the bow do the work you don't have to you don't have to be very light you don't have to put any extra pressure on so improper bow technique probably number one press just pressing too hard i would say um number two not using enough rosin or using too much rosin so um i would probably put an addendum onto that and say using cheaper rosin as well now if you've got a cheaper student quality violin um and, you know and they come with little rosins whatever they are in in the end of the violin case and sometimes those rosins are not branded they are just it's just a random uh, cake of rosin and we don't really know what we're getting so the first thing I would do and this isn't very expensive at all is just toss that cake of rosin in the bin and just get something just a little bit nicer so I mean you know you can you can go onto Amazon and get them something like a hide a shine is fine it isn't my personal preference but it's it's you know it's a decent it's okay for what it is and it's certainly not the kind of rubbish that you're probably gonna generic stuff that you're probably getting in the the cheaper violin setup so you've bought yourself a cheap violin that's fine the next best thing you can do is is to not add to any of that scratch is just to replace that with a, a slightly nicer cake of rosin so uh parastro gold flex uh is is quite is is an okay rosin i'm 
Personally, I'm not keen on that, and I only say that because I've made videos on this in in the past, and I know some of you old timers that are watching this will have known that I've mentioned that. But it's still a decent, it's you know, it's still a decent cake of rosin. It, I don't like it for my personal reasons. It doesn't suit the bow hair that I have. It doesn't suit my, you know, just personally for me. But if you've got it, that's absolutely fine. And I know a lot of people do like it. Um, the one I have. I have this one and this is Sartori rosin. I hope that's coming out. So you can just get this from Amazon. It is a little bit harder to get hold of. I can't find any links to this, but it's called Sartori rosin. I'll I'll put a picture up of it so you can see. I don't know if that is coming out or not, but it's it's this anyway. So I I really like this one. I purchased this over and over, but to be perfectly frank, I mean I think I've got two of these actually because I've got this is why this one doesn't look like it's used very much but, you know this might be expensive for rosin but this will last you 10 years so do yourself a favor and just get yourself a decent rosin if you've got a if you've got a cheaper violin you've not spent very much money on the violin you've not spent very much money on the bow so you don't want to be making things worse and adding to the extra scratch just ditch that rosin and get something better and I'll tell you why, because the cheaper rosins, they're very dusty. They're not very finely milled. These are finely milled and then they're kind of melded all in again. It's the quality of the sap that it takes from the tree. It's, it's lots of things. I mean, we don't know really what's in the rosins because it's, it's all proprietary information. So no one's gonna be telling you that, but we know full well, if you buy a supermarket owned brand, generally, or the very basic version, it isn't gonna be as nice as the branded let's just say generically speaking <laughs> just for just for the sake of an argument so we don't know what's in them so they're not going to be you know they're not going to be nice things and the cheaper the rosin the dustier they are if they're dusty they're just a nightmare a lot of the time as well they can be very uh, they leave like a thick dust on the violin so that will cake up actually you can see a little bit on my violin because i haven't quite cleaned it i don't know if you can see if it might be reflecting probably just there just a little bit of dust on there i just i I just haven't cleaned it. I've just been lazy, but actually it's good to show you. But when you're having the cheaper violin, uh, sorry, the cheaper rosins, this cakes up quite a bit on the body of the violin and it gets caked up over the strings as well. It gets caked up on the bow, it gets everywhere. And then you're bowing on top of that as well. So it doesn't really help with the clarity and the smoothness and the crystal clear tone that you wanna be creating. They're very sticky as well. They're just, the cheaper ones are just awful. But it, you know what, if, if you've got a rosin that lasts for five to 10 years at that kind of price, you do the math on that one. And I think the last one would be maintaining a consistent bow speed. So it kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with the first one. But if we're maintaining a nice consistent bow speed, we're gonna be maintaining a nice consistent pressure as well. So. So I know that's gonna depend on the speed of the pieces that you're going to be playing but what we don't want to be doing is kind of you know adjusting adjusting the bow speed halfway through so if you've got a good a good a good rounded speed you're going to have a good pressure if you've got a good pressure you've got a good speed so those two kind of uh, sort of go hand in hand together so there we go i really just wanted to drop in with a very super quick simple easy video that might just be the crux of solving the problems as to why your violin might be scratchy and screechy if it is still scratchy and screechy after this um you know there, there might be more reasons than this but these are probably the top two slash three that are why you you know your your violin is not sounding so clear and you're not getting that nice kind of tone from it so Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.